Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Durier in The Woman in the Window. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Mark Hellinger. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Some years ago, I produced a picture called Brother Orchid, starring Edward G. Robinson in one of those gangster roles he made so famous. During the making of that film, Eddie expressed to me an ultimate desire to put down his revolver and interpret characters of more variety and scope. Well, he has such a role tonight. He's the quiet and scholarly professor in the unusual drama The Woman in the Window from International Studios, producers of Tomorrow is Forever. Not for very long, however, does he lead the calm, scholastic life, because we throw across his path a strange but fascinating woman, then add a homicidal maniac who precipitates a murder, and bring you a most exciting melodrama, one of Hollywood's greatest successes of 1945. Co-starred in our cast, from one of the theater's oldest, most respected families, is Joan Bennett. Also, Dan Durier, who has hurried west from his native New York City to be with us in tonight's play. Now... From coast to coast, the curtain rises on The Woman in the Window, starring Edward G. Robinson as Professor Wanley, Joan Bennett as Alice Reed, and Dan Durier as Height. Dusk in midtown New York City. A scorching July day has ended, and now, before the evening rush to theaters, the streets are almost empty. There's a clubhouse just off Fifth Avenue, an unpretentious, dignified, brownstone building. And waiting in front of it is an unpretentious, dignified gentleman. Next to the clubhouse is an art gallery. Slowly, the gentleman walks over and gazes into the window. Enchanted by the provocative face that smiles at him from a newly painted canvas, he is unaware that two men now stand behind him. (laughs) Just look at him. Richard Wanley, associate professor of applied psychology, pulled over by a picture of a pretty girl. I wonder how long we have to stand here before he notices us. Oh, uh, Frank. And Michael. Well, how are you? Been waiting long? Oh, no. Uh, I say, who is she? The uh, girl of the portrait. We haven't the faintest idea. But she's definitely our dream girl, of course. We noticed her last night. Well, it's an extraordinary painting. And the model probably is an extraordinary woman. <laughs> well, how about dinner? I'm starved. Good. Uh, family get off all right, Richard? Yes, this afternoon, and I'm lonesome already. Now, to tell the truth, Richard, you're thrilled over the prospects. <laughs> well, who wouldn't be? A whole month of bachelorhood? No, I repeat, gentlemen, I miss my wife and I miss my children. Club and have dinner. Ah. <laughs> That's what I call a meal. Well, what's on the program now? I suggest a drink, a cigar, and a good old talk fest right here in the club. Are you out of your mind? Frank, what about the uh, the stork club? <laughs> That's more like it. Now, what's gotten into you tonight, the two of you? You're determined to show me the town, aren't you? Throw over the traces. Whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see you celebrate. It'll do you good. Well, that's a fine prescription, Michael, from one of the city's most respected doctors. It's an excellent prescription. Frank, as a district attorney, you should know some nice gay spots. There are some that your office may be thinking of closing up. Oh, now, look, look, we're three old crocs. That sort of shenanigans is not for us. Oh, so I'm an old croc, eh? Uh... Richard is absolutely right. It's a darn good thing, too. Men our age... Good thing? I didn't say it's a good thing. I rather doubt that it is for men of our age. I'm stuffy and stodgy, and all the brightness of life, the spirit and adventure, well, it's all gone by now. Oh, come now. Michael was just kidding. Only as far as tonight's concerned, I've got to be at the hospital in 30 minutes, but in principle, I was not kidding. Eh, If you and Richard worked with the police as I do, you'd see what happens when middle-aged men try to act like colts. You'd know the tragedy starts out of the merest trifles. A casual impulse to do something daring, an idle flirtation. Youth can handle such things, but we... Uh, Judging from that look you're giving me, Richard, I am treading on a tender spot. Oh, nonsense. If I'm giving you any look, it's simply one of academic disagreement. You see, with me, the flesh is still strong. It's the spirit that grows weaker by the hour. (laughs) 
Yes, even if adventure should beckon to me. Even in the form of, uh, well, of that most alluring woman in the window next door. I'm afraid all I do is clutch my coat a little tighter and run like the devil. Well, at least you could get her phone number for me first. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to break this up, but I'm on my way. Uh, oh, wait a second. You'll give me a lift. Oh, uh, uh, what about dinner tomorrow night? Excellent. Richard? Well, shall we say here? Seven o'clock? Good. Oh, uh... Do you think it's safe to leave me here alone in my rebellious state of mind? Uh, that depends on your plans. Hmm? A drink, glance at a book, and home in bed by 11 o'clock. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, Michael. See you tomorrow. Oh, uh, Charles. Yes, sir? Uh, Charles, uh, I uh, like scotch and soda. I'm going to read here for a while. Oh, uh, will you be sure to remind me when it's 10.30? Yes, sir. You know, these absent-minded professors, sometimes I lose all track of time. I'll remind you, sir. 10.30. Professor Wanley? Professor Wanley? Hmm? Oh, uh... Oh, Charles. Half past ten, sir. I didn't fall asleep. I'm afraid you did, sir. Well, well, I better be getting on home. Shall I get your car, sir? No, no, no. I parked just next door in front of that art gallery. Well, good night, Professor. Uh, good night, Charles. Paper, morning edition, paper. Paper, mister? Hmm. Oh, oh uh, no, 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 thanks. Say, hmm. that dame in the picture, some tomato. Yeah, some tomato. The woman in the window. What did I tell Frank? I clutch my coat a little tighter and run like... Well, what do you think of it? I beg your pardon? The portrait, what do you think of it? Well, it's an amazing por... Why? Why, it's you. You're the one... Yes, I posed for it. Well, then my admiration for the artist is doubled. You mean it looks like Oh, me? more than that. It is you. I shouldn't <clears> be talking to you. It's just that every now and then I like to wander over here and watch people's reactions when they see the portrait. Oh, you mean like uh, just now? How did I react? Well, there are only two reactions. One is a kind of solemn stare at the painting, and the other is a long, low whistle. Well, which was mine? I'm not certain, but I suspect that in another moment you might have given a long low, solemn whistle. <laughs> well, <laughs> that uh, rather embarrasses me. Well, you don't look like a man given to whistles. Oh, no, no, it's, uh, well, if my admiration was that obvious, I'm afraid you might misunderstand what I What if I said that I'd like very much to have a drink and talk for a few minutes? Well, you must excuse me if I, if I appear completely bewildered. I am. Well, I have no designs on you, and one drink is all I'd care for. Is that all right? Well, it's fine, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, what's so funny? Well, I, I was just thinking of a couple of my friends. I can't wait till I tell them about this. You see, uh, they admired your portrait, too. I have a few other subjects that the same artist painted. Would you care to see them? Oh, very much. Then you can take me home. Well, it's uh, a little late, isn't it? Besides, I uh, recently was warned against the siren call of adventure at my age. Is this adventure? Oh, yes, yes, it is. I, I should never have come here to have a drink with you. Never? No, but I think I'd like to see those other paintings very much. Seen finer composition and shading. Well, I have a bottle of wine inside. Let's have a drink before you go. This is much too pleasant to break up. I should say no. But I haven't the slightest intention. I'll be right there. Talk too tight. Well, it's it's the wire around the top of the bottle. Uh, do you have something I can cut the wire with? Well, how about these scissors? Oh, fine. That your dog? Why, yes, it's... Uh, Who? Uh, I don't know. It, it couldn't be. 
Oh, it's probably someone trying to locate somebody else in the building. That's what happens when you live on the ground floor. Alice, I just got in town and I... Oh, Fred. Fred, I... Who are you? Well, there's really no reason to be upset. My name is, uh... Fred. Fred, darling, listen, please. I warned you. I told you Fiverr found you double-crossing me. You... you... Stop that, you fool. Stop, Stop hitting her. And you... I'll kill you. You... you... For heaven's you... sakes, man. You... you don't know what you're doing. Go on. Talk. Talk. Fred, you're choking and you're killing Stop Fred. Stop. 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 I'll kill you, too, you no good little... Here, the scissors. Uh, give me the scissors. You... Hurry. Uh, get away from here, Alice. Stop. You... Please, no, hurry. Good. Here. Was... What are you... Oh, no. No, don't. Is... Is he... Yes. Yes, I... I think so. I, uh... I better telephone the police. What's his name? Howard. Fred Howard. That's what he told me. You, you don't think that's his right name? I don't know. He... He's not breathing. No. He never told me where he lived or anything. He's just someone I knew... But he's so jealous in his temper, it's horrible. I'd see him maybe once or twice a week, but always alone. You you better tell me the truth. I am telling you the truth. You uh, said you always saw him alone? And how did you meet him? On a train. Why? Who knows that he saw you at all? Unless he's told someone, which I doubt. No one. You uh, never mentioned him to anyone? Not his name, not even the name he gave me. You think there's something we can do? I'll do anything. I don't want to go to now, jail. please, please try to keep calm. Let's think this out. He was trying to kill me. There's no question about that. If I hadn't killed him, he'd have killed me. What of the police say it was self-defense? I'm ruined any which way. My whole life. You're thinking of something. What is it? No, I was wondering if we have the nerve for something... Something dangerous that would shut the door on us completely if we were caught. Anything you say. I'd die in jail. I'd die. Now, if nobody knows about you, if nobody saw him come here, how could either of us be connected with this murder if his body were found miles away from here? But how? My car is still parked in front of the art gallery. I'll drive it back here. Then what? I'll take the body, leave it, uh, oh, somewhere in the country. It'll be found, but maybe not for a week or so. You go for the car and I wait here? Would you be afraid? Well, once you got out of here, why should you come back? I don't even know who you are. And there isn't a man in the world who wouldn't try to get out of a mess like this if he could. Well, we mustn't quarrel. If we do that, we're lost. Why can't I go with you? Because we mustn't be seen together. There's no need for me to tell you who I am if we're successful. All right. But leave something here. I don't understand. Leave something that would identify you if you don't come back. That's, that's fair enough. That's my hat. My... Uh, I have a vest. I always wear a vest, even in summer. It'll do. All right. Now we have to move fast. Look, almost no blood at all. That's very fortunate. Now, uh, wash the scissors. Yes. Uh, better boil them. Fingerprints, you know. The police do miraculous things with clues. A piece of cloth, a button. I'll be very careful. Nearly one o'clock. I may be some time getting back. Why? I don't know why. I only know that I want to be cautious. I just don't get panicky and call the police. I promise you that I won't fail you. Yes, uh, yes, officer. What's the matter with you? Uh, well, uh, why, nothing. <laughs> I see your license. Uh, yes, sir. What are you sweating for? Uh, am, I, am I? Oh, nice and cool now. Oh, yes. Name's Wanley, huh? Hmm. Got any other identification? Well, I, I have a pencil. My initials are engraved on it here in my vest pocket. 
Oh, I guess I left my best home. Uh, how about a letter? Uh, here, it's uh, from the president of Gotham College. I see it. Professor, huh? Uh, associate professor. I know it sounds foolish, but I assure you I wasn't aware I was speeding. Speeding? I didn't tag you for speeding. You, uh... No. Your life. Don't you ever turn them on at night? Oh. Oh, oh, I, I, I'm I, sorry. <laughs> okay. Get going, Professor, but watch those lights from now on. Yes, yes, I will, officer. Thank you. I thought you'd never get back. Sorry. I wondered about it myself. Before I forget, my name is Reed. Alice Reed, in case you have to come back again. But if we're lucky, I won't have to come back. Now, uh, we better get rid of anything that might identify him. I've already done that. You searched him? It had to be done, didn't it? Here's his wallet and his watch. A watch? Uh, what are those initials? C.M. C.M.? Well, that doesn't sound like Fred Howard, does it? Uh, put the watch with the other things. Uh, tomorrow, get on a ferry boat and drop it all overboard and be sure that no one sees you. Now, uh... What about this rug? Well, there's only that one small spot. Well, wash it very thoroughly. A laboratory can find signs of blood that the naked eye could never see. I'll take care of it. Now, do exactly what I tell you, please. Otherwise, we might as well give ourselves up. We've got to think of everything in advance. Now, remember that. I will. Now, uh, when I leave here, I want you to go over the whole... Uh, wash these glasses and put them back on the shelf. And get rid of that champagne bottle. There mustn't be one sign that you had any visitors tonight, him or me or anyone else. Well, looks as if I'm ready. I'll get a blanket. Good, I'll bring it right back. He's, he's quite heavy. Now, put out that light. Open the door. Take a look in the lobby. It's all clear. You forgot something. Here. Oh, my best. Thank you. I won't see you again, I suppose. Well, for both our sakes, I hope this ends the whole thing completely and forever. All right, then. Goodbye. Goodbye. In just a moment, Mark Hellinger will present Act Two of The Woman in the Window, starring Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Durier.
Back to Mark Hellinger and our stars. Act two of The Woman in the Window, starring Edward G. Robinson as Professor Wanley, Joan Bennett as Alice Reed, and Dan Duryea as Height. In a remote section of Westchester County, the body of a man sprawls grotesquely in a clump of underbrush just beyond a barbed wire fence. The ground is wet, for it rained hard last night, but still visible on the barbed wire is a drop of blood. And now, it's nine o'clock at night. Professor Richard Wanley has just finished dinner with his friend, Dr. Barkstein. Quite unnoticed, Beneath the sleeve of Wanley's coat is a fresh, clean, white bandage. A cut from barbed wire can leave a nasty wound. Well, Richard, heard yet from Grace and the kids? Yes, I had a wire this morning. Arrived safe. An eventful trip, all fine. No doubt you proceeded to spoil them with an immediate answer. Well, I wrote Grace this afternoon. I told her I'm lonelier than I ever have been. <laughs> you look positively wistful. Well, doggone it, I do miss her. Uh, I wonder what's keeping Frank. Uh, he didn't say? Only that he was phoning from the police commissioner's office. He sounded excited. He... Well, here he is now. Frank! Oh, hello, Michael. Richard? Hello. Sorry I missed dinner. Well, uh, count for yourself. Claude Mazard has disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? Mazard left Washington yesterday afternoon. He arrived at Penn Station last night. And vanished completely. Mazza, the uh, financier? Yes. The police are waiting for him until midnight. If he doesn't show up, we're giving it to the newspapers. Then watch the fireworks. The stock market? And how? Uh, uh, what did he look like? I mean, uh, uh, what sort of fellow was he? A perfect nuisance. I knew him. He used to be a patient of mine. Oh? I didn't know that. Nerves, blood pressure, the most ungovernable temper I've ever seen. Well, just because man doesn't show up for a day, why well, assume he's been murdered? I didn't say he was murdered. Well, what I, uh... Yes, Charles. Telephone for you, sir. Oh, thanks. Uh, be right back. Excuse me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I said Maz Mazard was murdered. But uh, Frank's whole manner, it seemed to indicate violence of some kind. Frank suspects it, too. His head's up like a bird dog. Oh. He's on the scent of something. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Uh, Charles? Mr. Lawler's phone call. He had to go right to his office. He said you would understand. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, Michael, I've, uh, my brother, a bad headache. Uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll run on home. Well, I'm rather tuckered myself. You want something for that head? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's just the heat. Some nerve of Frank leaving us high and dry about Mazard. Well, maybe he'll know more about it tomorrow. I'll give him a call in the morning. Yes, he will. He'll probably be busy. Nonsense. I'll see that we meet Frank tomorrow and get the whole sordid story. Can I call you at home? Home? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, no, I'll be home all day. Hello? Richard. This is Michael. Do you happen to have your radio on? No. Why? Well, turn it on. There's a news broadcast. They found Claude Mazard's body up in Westchester. Uh -huh. Some kids taking a hike in the woods. And you were right. He was murdered. Well. Well, I, I guess we won't be seeing Frank then. He'll be all tied up. We certainly will see him. We're meeting him at six at the club again. Oh, uh, by the way, how's that uh, head of yours? Oh, well, uh, uh, better, thanks. Good. Well, I, I'll see you in a little while. Yes, uh, thanks for calling, Michael. Well, Frank, we're waiting to hear all about it. Well, by now you've read the papers, but here's something. Mazard was not killed where the body was found. Well, how do you know that? We've got tire marks of a parked car. It rained, you know, and the ground was soft. We also have a man's footprints. Uh, deep prints when he was going into the woods carrying the body. Uh, lighter coming back. Yes, the shoe prints should be very helpful. Shoe prints? Uh, these were well-worn shoes. They've told us quite a bit. Don't be so indefinite. Well, the man weighs about 160 pounds, wears a size 8 shoe, and is probably in moderate circumstances. Well, that's uh, rather a, a guess now, isn't it? Uh, no, the shoes have been half-sold. Uh, we like evidence like that. 
It doesn't help us name the murderer, of course, but once we line up a suspect, uh, these things are positive checks against him. The car, the shoes, the kind of suit he wore. You know that, too? Oh, yes. And his blood. Inspector Jackson found blood on a wire fence. It didn't match with Mazard's. Yes, but uh, a clue like that on a barbed wire fence, uh, could that be enough to be of any use? Did I say barbed wire fence? Well, uh, di- didn't you? No. But it was barbed wire, of course. Oh. I was only trying to impress you fellows with my keenness. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in that case, Frank, I'll, I'll give you a chance to impress the whole city. Look at this. At what? Here, under my sleeve. See? Bandaged. Yeah. Doesn't this suggest something to you, Frank? Uh, yes. You see my name on the front pages, and you make a desperate effort to elbow your way into the case by insinuating that you're the guilty man. <laughs> uh, but it's no use, my boy. You've wounded yourself for nothing. Did you ever see such selfishness? <laughs> that bandage, Richard, what happened? Hmm? Uh, oh, uh, a couple of days ago, I uh, uh, cut it on a tin can. It's nothing. Would you like to hear what the police think? You bet we would. Well, this afternoon we got a line on a woman. Now, who she is... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, looking for me, Williams? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Lawler. One of the boys on the staff. Be right back. Frank's a very smart man, Michael. Yes, he is. Richard, what's the matter? Oh, I... I, I haven't been feeling any too well. Missing the family, eh? Yes, very much. And a headache yesterday. I think you could do with a few capsules. Capsules? I'll write a prescription. Two days should pep you up considerably. Oh, uh, you, uh, you don't walk in your sleep, do you? <laughs> not, not that I know of. Why? Well, I, I hate to think of you wandering into the bathroom and popping these capsules into your mouth like peanuts. Poison? Technically, no. It's, uh, it's a gland concentrate. But too much of it would hit the old heart like a sledgehammer. Instantly? Oh, 20 or 30 minutes and... Uh, what's going on here? Oh, just a prescription for Richard. It not only kills you if you take enough, but it leaves no trace. Just a case of heart disease. That's all you could say. Oh, fine. Uh, uh, Frank, uh, a minute ago, you, you mentioned the woman. Oh, yes. Well, the police had a theory this afternoon. Uh, Mazard was a bachelor, but he had a girlfriend. They're certain of that. But they don't know who she is. Well, Mazard probably called on her. A man was already there. A man the girl liked better than Mazard. Well, how would the police know that? Well, because she's made no effort to bring the killer to justice or identify herself. That's just a theory, of course. I said that. Well, Mazard is killed. They get rid of his body. But now these two people, this uh, man and this woman, uh, sit hating and fearing each other, each wondering how long it'll be before the other blabs out the whole story. Always a woman, eh? Oh, that was the theory this afternoon. Oh, they've uh, changed their minds? Uh, Williams just told me something that pulls the rug right out from under that theory. Really? It seems that uh, Mazard's partners were always afraid that he'd get into trouble. They knew his temper. So they hired a bodyguard, a fellow by the name of Arthur Height, to follow him secretly at all times. The bodyguard has also disappeared. Then he could be the murderer, couldn't he? Uh, well, he might have tried to blackmail Mazard, kill him in a fight. Or he might have witnessed the murder and is getting ready to blackmail the killers. But even if he's 100% innocent... Height still won't walk in and talk. Well, uh, why do you say that? Why wouldn't he? Well, because he's a known crook with the blackmailing record. He's wanted now for at least two other raps. Uh, We'll get that gentleman only when we run him down, not before. Nice fellow to pick for a bodyguard. (laughs) Don't ask me why Wall Street geniuses do anything. He was tough and strong, and I suppose that's all they thought about. Anyway, I'm going up to Westchester tomorrow morning to look over this place where they found the body. Want to come along? I wish I could. But I've got a date with some gallstones. Richard? Oh, uh, Go along by all means. Well, I, I'm Oh, he'll that, go, uh, Frank. I'm his physician, uh, and I order him to go. Give you something to think about, Richard. <laughs> well, uh, all right. Good. Inspector Jackson will be with me. Uh, we'll try to show you how the law operates the nailer man. <laughs> How much uh, further, Inspector? Oh, just a half a mile or so. Well, I, I must say this is quite an adventure for me. Uh, Richard, uh, that hand of yours seems to be bothering you. Let me see. Oh, throbs a little, nothing serious. What's the matter with your hand, Professor Wanley? Uh, well, I, uh, 
Uh, I, I was opening a can the other night, and the can opener slipped. Oh. <laughs> but all around the bandage, that rash there. Oh. Why, well, that's poison ivy, isn't it? Oh, as a matter of fact, it is. The uh, day after I cut it, I played golf. I uh, looked for a lost ball and caught him to some poison ivy. Nasty stuff. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lola. Yes? We picked up that woman this morning. Good. What's she got to say? We'll know in a few minutes. They've got her at the scene now. Woman? Oh, oh uh, that uh, theory you were telling me about, Frank. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, before we talk to her, Inspector, I'd like to do some looking around. Okay. Well, here we are. That's the place down there where you see those The woman's waiting in William's car, Mr. Lawler. Shall we take a look in the woods now? Uh, yes. I want to point out to the professor just what you've learned. Oh, please. I really wouldn't want to interfere. It's a pleasure. Here. Well, back there is where the car was parked. We know it had Goodrich tires, 716, about 20,000 miles. A motorcycle officer recalls seeing a car that might be the one we're looking for. Oh? Did he uh, see who was in it? A man. But he couldn't make a positive identification. Well, let's look at where he dropped the body. Uh, Richard. Yes? Are you going to be our guide? Oh, uh, do you mean I'm walking in the right direction? Straight as an arrow. <laughs> well, now. That's very odd. I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking of where I was going. <laughs> oh, don't get nervous, Richard. We rarely arrest people just for knowing where the body was. Now, our killer didn't know about this fence. He couldn't go any farther, so he just dumped the body over here. You see? Yes. He tore his coat. Probably the sleeve when he lifted the body over. We found a couple of shreds of wool and fiber. Uh, they couldn't have been from Mazard clothes? Different material. And we got that sample of blood from this barb here. Hmm. Mazard was a heavy man. The murderer certainly didn't pick himself an easy job. Oh, especially at night. Well, yes, it might have been at night. I rather figure it had along about daybreak. Well, I, I thought the newspaper said night. Uh, uh, we can go back now. Oh, say, uh, what are those boards doing over there? The men put them there yesterday. They found some poison ivy. Poison ivy? Hmm. Richard, looks as if you'd better do some more explaining. Well, uh, closing in on me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you'd only confess, Professor, we could wrap this whole case up before lunch. Oh, no, 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 not me. Uh, you're, you're going to have to work for this one, Inspector. Uh, just wait till he sees the woman. He'll break down completely. Well, if you don't mind, I'll skip that part. Oh? I've, uh, I've been having headaches for the last few days. If, if it's all right, I'll, I'll just rest a while in your car. Oh, sorry, Richard. Sure. I'll wait in a few minutes. Well, how's the head? Feeling any better? Uh, yes, uh, a little, thanks. Well, we'll be on our way directly. Uh, what does the woman have to say? Uh, very little. She's got uh, something on her conscience. But uh, what woman hasn't? <laughs> well, uh, where where did they where they find us? Uh, second class hotel off Broadway. She seems a lot too dingy for Mazard. He'd do better than that, I'm sure. Oh, uh, cheap looking. Uh, bottom of the barrel. We're about ready to drop the woman angle anyway. It's the bodyguard who's hot now. Very hot. The bodyguard. Yes, I, I see. <laughs> Yes? This is Alice Reed. Miss Reed, how did you know my phone number? How did you know my name? Have you seen the early edition? No. Your picture's in the paper. Congratulations. Will you please tell me what you're talking about? Well, wait a second, I'll read it to you. Here it is. Dr. George F. Reynolds, president of Gotham College, yesterday announced the promotion of Richard Wanley to head of the Department of Psychology. Oh. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. I, I, I wasn't expecting it. Did I frighten you? Uh, uh, a bit. Everything all right? I suppose so, isn't it? You've uh, heard nothing from anyone? Have you? No, not so far. Oh, I'm not worrying. Now, I'm sure we're out of it. I hope so. And I'm not going to bother you, believe me. Oh, it's quite all right. I'm, I'm rather glad I heard from you. Well, there goes my buzzer. I'd better hang up. Yes, well, good night, then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Coming. Who is it? Open up, Miss Reed. Who is it? 
My name is Height. Arthur Height. I want to have a little talk about our friend, Mr. Mazard. I don't know you, and I don't know your friend, Mr. Mazard, so beat it. You don't want me to get tough, do you? I don't care how tough you get. You're not coming in here. I'm not kidding, lady. Open the door, or I go to the cop. Come in. Thanks, Miss Reed. Now, say what you've got to say and get out of here. Sure. In case you didn't hear, there's a reward of 10000 bucks for information leading to the arrest of the murderer of Claude Mazard. You didn't come here to tell me that. Look, sister, if you're going to say you never heard of Mazard, save your breath. I've tailed him here a dozen times. He's been here, but not under that name. I never knew who he was until I saw the papers, so you're the one who's wasting your breath. I don't think I am. Honestly. I know nothing whatever about the death of Mr. Mazard. Nothing? Okay. Then you won't mind a bit if I just take a look around in here. Sit down and relax, honey. This may take me quite a little while. In just a moment, we'll return with Act Three of The Woman in the Window, starring Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea. To our microphone comes Mark Hellinger. Act three of The Woman in the Window, starring Edward G. Robinson as Professor Wanley, Joan Bennett as Alice Reed, and Dan Duryea as Height. For nearly an hour, Alice Reed has stood helplessly by, watching her visitor search her apartment with frightening thoroughness. A pounding heart is calmer now. For it's apparent that the bodyguard of the murdered man has discovered very little. Now that you've ransacked my rooms, Mr. Hyde, suppose you tell me what you're looking for. I wouldn't know that, Miss Reed, till I find it. But I'd be glad to settle for a trace of blood, or a photograph, or even a confession. Confession? I can't understand it. Everything here has been wiped so clean. Pretty good housekeeper, I guess. Thanks. 
Yes, sir, not a fingerprint anywhere. Not even where you'd think they'd be naturally. Oh, I picked up these scissors inside. Are these the ones he was stabbed with? They've been cleaned off real good, but I think I'll take them along. Anything else? As a matter of fact, there is. This, Miss Reed, this gold pencil. Oh. I found it in your dressing room. The pencil's engraved R.W. Now, that doesn't stand for Alice Reed. And it doesn't stand for Claude Mazard, either. Whose is it, baby? What's his first name? R for Robert? Or Ralph, maybe? Oh, oh. I'm getting warm, all right. There's no question about that in my mind. All right, what do you want? Well, the way I figure it, you just don't want the police nosing around here. Is that right? Who does? Oh, that's what I mean. Well, there's a $10,000 reward out for just the sort of information I got. But the way I see it, if I got 5000 from you, I'd be perfectly satisfied. Are you crazy? I haven't got $5,000. Go on. Go to the police and tell them whatever you like. You don't want me to do anything like that, Miss Reed. Mr. Mazard was a rich man. You can't tell me you didn't get something out of him. Don't forget, you'll be a lot better off dealing with me than the homicide squad. I have a pin and bracelet. They must be worth at least $1,000. Take them and get out of here. No, ma'am. Nothing like that. Nothing but cash. Five grand. Cash. You know you're just bluffing. If you can get a $10,000 reward, why should you be satisfied with my 5000 Suppose I tell you to whistle for it. Do you want to take a chance on that? You see, honey, you killed Mazard, you and some guy. If you were in the clear, you'd have called the cops the minute I stuck my nose in here. That's why you got to look at it my way, don't you see? I'll have to think it over. Yes. You think it over and see if I'm not right. And I'll be back here tomorrow night. Now, don't worry. Just get the cash, and that'll be the end of the whole business. Well, we uh, better not talk anymore here. Yeah? You may be noticed. What do we do? Walk? Yes. You're sure you've told me everything? Well, there's something else. The night it happened, you forgot to take something out of your vest. A gold pencil. Oh, that's what it's been. I, I kept it because I I wasn't sure of you. I wanted something just in case. I found the pencil? Yes. You're angry with me? Well, it's done now. It, it doesn't matter. I don't expect you to pay all the money. I have a little, and I can raise some more on some jewelry. Well, you're very fair, Alice. Very generous. It'll be worth it to get rid of him. Yes, but it won't get rid of him. If you pay him once, it'll go on as long as we live. But if we don't, he'll set the police on us. Well, that's blackmail. You pay or the blow falls. So what can we do? Well, let's not talk anymore now. Uh, meet me here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. You think you can figure out something? Alice, there are only three ways to deal with a blackmailer. You can pay him off and pay him and pay him until you're bled white. Or you can call the police and take the consequences. Or you can kill him. Just three ways. Are you going home now? Yes, but on my way, I'm stopping at a drugstore. There's a prescription I want to get filled. morning. Mm -hmm. uh, just walk along here as we don't know each other. Did you notice anyone following you? No, I don't think so. But I'm frightened. Well, I give you my word. The police don't even know we're alive. I've been to the bank. Here, yeah, take this envelope. There's $5,000 in it. I can pay some of it back. Well, we'll worry about that later. When you see Hyde tonight, uh, don't give him all of it. Just tell him he didn't raise it all, that he'd have to come back tomorrow. You mentioned a prescription last night. Yes. Have you any idea what it is? I think I have. Well, it's in the envelope, too, for some capsules. Open the capsules and shake out the powder. In liquid, it dissolves almost instantly. 
The druggist happened to mention that. How many capsules are needed? I wrote it all down. There's a note in the box. But if you don't think you can go through with it, we'll work out some other plan. I can do it. How soon is the drug effective? 20 to 30 minutes. Once he takes it, make sure he leaves your apartment. Well, we better separate now. Yes. Wish me luck. Good luck. If you lose your nerve, don't get frightened. We'll find another way. I'll phone you tonight after he's gone. Come in, Mr. Height. Thanks. Hey, you're all dolled up. Is that get up for my benefit? Hmm, I'm glad if you like it, of course. That Mazard knew how to pick them, all right. Okay, where's the dough? Well, $5,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. Now, I haven't been able to raise it all yet, but I will tomorrow. How much have you got? 2900 That's about what I guess. What do you mean? 2900 That's the kind of a figure I'd say if I had some other idea in mind. Not too little, not too much. Don't you believe me? Who told you to hand me this line? Nobody. Nobody, hmm? Is it all right? Here, it's in this envelope. Yeah. You know, you're pretty cute. Is it all right? I'll take it. What else can I do? Well, now, if you don't mind, I think I need a drink. Would you like one? What have you got? I'm going to have a scotch and soda. Make it two. Sit down. I'll be back in a minute. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Here, here's your drink. Thanks. You know, I've been sitting here thinking. Oh? Where's the boyfriend all this time? There isn't any boyfriend. You don't believe a thing I say, do you? I'm just naturally what they call a cynic, honey. What kind of a heel is he shoving a nice kid like you out in front? Well, what's the use of my trying to tell you anything? So everything's kosher. Yes. Then why are you giving me this dough? Just because you like me? I'm giving it to you because I don't want to get involved in any way. You can't tell what they try to hang on me. Oh, honey. Well, you're not drinking. Wait a minute. How would you like to get out of this whole thing? Get out of it? Yes, completely. How? Huh. I'll be leaving town soon, Mexico. You can come along. Think about it for a minute. I'm not such a bad guy. I didn't say you were. Take a look in the mirror, beautiful. And if you're still thinking of that boyfriend you haven't got, don't be a sucker. In a jam like this, you've got to look out for yourself. Yes, I suppose so. When would we leave? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, I'll have to do some phoning. I can't have people running to the police getting excited about me disappearing. Yeah, you'll have to watch that. Is it a deal, then? I guess so. I guess it is. Look at me, baby. Yes, sir. Mazard sure could pick up. Well, you leave it to me and we'll do all right. I don't seem to have any choice. But don't you want your drink? Here. Here's some more ice. Well, here's to us. You really want me to drink this? Why not? Uh Uh-uh. You take it. But I have a drink. I know. I'll take yours and you take mine. What's the matter? Nothing. All right, then. Drink it. Drink it, I said. What do you take me for, some punk kid? I don't know what you're talking about. No, then why wouldn't you drink it? All right. You gave me 2,900 bucks. Now let's have the rest of it. There isn't any more. Will you stop acting like I'm a school kid? Get the rest of that don't. Wait a minute. Stay right where you are. Right under my nose all the time. I thought that book looked kind of fat. Hiding a dough in a book on a bookshelf. And a watch. A gold watch behind the book. You amateur. How could you lie to pat me like that? All right. I did lie, but it's all there. You've got your money. Now get out. A watch with Mazard's initials on it. C.M. I'm taking this too, honey. And just because you've been such a smart little chiseler, you're going to have to dig up some more dough for Pappy. Another five grand. How do you like that? By tomorrow night. It's no use. I can't do it. You try, anyway. And I'll be around tomorrow night again just to see what luck you had. Hello? 
Hello? Hello? He's gone, Mr. Wadley. Oh. Well, I've been going almost crazy waiting for you to telephone. You know those capsules I gave you? Well, I've got some of them here right now in front of me. If something had gone wrong, I've been thinking they, they'd be my only way out. Oh, you mustn't talk like that. Well, there's no need to now, is there? Please, listen to me. What's the matter? He's too smart. He figured it all out about the drug, and he's got all the money, and now he wants more. More and more and more. I don't know what else I could have done. He'll be back tomorrow night. What can we do? I don't know. I haven't any more money. I just don't know. I'm too tired to think about it anymore. Too tired. Hello? Hello? My wife, my children. There's no other way, no other way. I'd hate to think of you popping these into your mouth like peanuts. It's the old heart like a sledgehammer. No other way. Just a case of heart disease, that's all you would say. Twenty, thirty minutes. Twenty, thirty minutes. Just a second, mister. I said just a second. You talking to me? Yeah. I'm from police headquarters. What were you doing in that apartment house? Detective, huh? Mind if I ask to see your badge? What's the matter? Don't you believe? Is that him, McKenzie? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's ducking back at the building there. I see him. Stay where you are, Copper. There's no sense shooting. You better drop that gun. I said stay where you are. Sorry, but I'm coming after you. I got him, McKenzie. Come here, we'll take a look. I've got a flashlight here. We can... Dead? Yeah. What do you want to start shooting for? Just didn't want to burn, I guess. He killed Mazard. You are sure of that, Inspector? Look. Look what's in his pocket. That watch? See the initials on it? C.M. Would you look at that bankroll? Yeah. Mazard always carried a roll. Funny, I was beginning to get an entirely different angle on this case. Well, this washes it up, I guess. Well, here comes the neighborhood. Stay here. Keep him back and I'll go telephone. Yes, sir. All right, stand back now. Stand back. Who is it, officer? Who is it? Only the guy that bumped off Claude Mazard, that's all. Did you hear what he said? The guy who killed Mazard. Yes, I heard. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. What's the matter, lady? Don't you feel good? <laughs> Operator, operator. Number, please. Operator, I've been trying to dial Morningside 85354, and there's no answer. But I know there's someone there. I know it. Morningside 85354? Yes, will you check it, please, and see if the line's out of order? Oh, please, it's very important. One moment, please. I'll call the number. Professor Wanley. Professor Wanley, sir. What? Who... Who who is it? You wanted me to remind you when it was 10.30, sir. Hmm? Oh, oh, oh. You must have fallen asleep. Asleep? I've I've been asleep? Yes, sir. A dream. It was... It was all a dream. Sir? Charles, I I can't tell you how happy I am to see you again. Well, thank you, sir. Well, I'll I'll get my hat and run along on home. Oh, this pencil, sir. I think this is your pencil, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, where was it? In the dining room. You must have left it there when you signed the dinner check. Well, it wouldn't do to lose this, Charles. My wife gave it to me as a going away present. Uh, she went away this afternoon. Uh, thank you, Charles. Good night. Uh, pleasant dream.
Paper, morning edition paper. Paper, mister? Hmm. Oh, uh, no, no, thanks. Say, hmm. That dame in the picture, some tomato. Yes, my boy. Some tomato. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.